right, hello, wine-drinking people. Time for more of what I've had to drink yesterday. And always happy to taste wines with people that, you know, specialize in what they do. And we got a lot of small companies, like legendary wine imports. And uh, this guy, Brian, Ralph Lewis, uh, is very passionate and knowledgeable about German wine, something that, I mean, I, I admittedly don't know enough about, even though I have been to Germany. I've visited several wine regions. Man, I don't drink enough of Germany's great Riesling. So I was glad to see these two GG, Grosskivex wines, which is a new classification in Germany, which they have determined all these vineyards, which are considered Grand Cru, just like the French have. And um, hey, man, the Germans have been doing it longer than anybody else. They knew where these vineyards were. They just had no classification system. This Oppenheim estate it's back to 700 A.D. They have got some of the oldest and longest-lived wineries in the world in Germany. And uh, these two different GG sites are from two uh, different um, soil types, the red clay here and the red slope, um, very famous in this part of Germany. And uh, Niederstein, the Glock, and the Olberg. Probably not pronouncing that completely correct, but um, let me tell you, Germany is not my strong suit. Foreign language, also not my strong suit. But these Grosskivex wines, these dry Rieslings, because you cannot use the GG status for sweet wines, the old style Spatlays and Auschlays wines, like from our famous, our, one of our favorite producers, Prum, even though all of their sites are considered Grand Cru because of the style of wine they make. They cannot put this designation on the bottle. Anyways, I'll tell you the first one we had, this wine, definitely a little step up in intensity and a little bit higher in sugar, 5.9, but also higher in pH, total acidity, 8.0. That's why you don't notice this sugar, man, because the acid is just so high as well. It balances out the little bit of residual sugar. This wine's got a lovely perfume nose. It took about a day to open up, though. Uh, lovely stone fruit, peaches, and uh, wonderful intensity. You know, these wines, although they've got, I mean, uh, that residual sugar gives them a richness in the tongue, a creamy texture, but the acidity cleans everything up and leaves your mouth fresh and uh, a big wine, everything in proportion. This wine needs time, though, a long layered finish here, a lot of minerality. The uh, Glock, which this wine has got a little bit less residual sugar, 3.6, but also less acidity to balance it out. And to me, this wine had a little more perfuminess, a little more stony kind of flinty note to the nose, a little bit more open and drinkable, but uh, man, just about as complex and long as the Olberg and uh, and just both of these wines, most excellent. I'm going to put my money in the Olbergs. It's 57 bucks. But, I mean, for GG, top-level uh, Grand Grosskivex, Grand Cru, German Riesling from a great producer, uh, these wines are still a relative value at $72 and $57. A really unique boot portfolio of German wines. I'm your host, Andrew Lampassoni, signing off for the Wine Watch, saying, remember, always drink the good stuff first.